Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, President Barachi, for, for inviting me. Thank you all for, for being here. So, so I wanted to uh, take the opportunity to share with you um, what we are building at Elsevier and why. And I think it's relevant to this debate about the next generation internet. So I have prepared some, some slides that I, I wanted to share with you if that's, uh, if that's okay. Um, so as the, the, the slides are coming up, um, hopefully in a, in a few seconds, <laughs> Um, I, I wanted maybe as um, the slides are, I think are, are coming up right now. Um, sorry about that. Um, just making sure. So maybe as a preamble, um, prior to joining Elsevier five years ago, I was running um, the search engine of eBay, the marketplace, which at the time was the fifth largest search engine in the world with 450 million queries a day. So um, um, I, I think over the years I've, 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 I've developed some understanding of information systems and, and what's going on. So that's what I wanted to bring to the, uh, to the, to the discussion today. So uh, maybe a quick word about research communities, right? Uh, because I think this is, a, this, is a, this is what Elsevier, at Elsevier we are trying to, to, to help. We are trying to help research information, uh, research communities to exchange information. And the way um, uh, research communities thrive is by exchanging information. And what we have found is that uh, researchers spend up to a quarter of their time uh, researcher, uh, researching e existing information, right? So you know this phrase, building on the shoulder of, of giants? It's actually true, right? There's no such thing as new knowledge, right? People come up with new knowledge by taking existing knowledge, associate, associating ideas among themselves, and coming up by associating ideas with new knowledge. And this is what this chart is, is trying to say, right? So I'm a member of a community, my, my community is computer science, and, and I come up, I do research, I've, I, I have several patterns myself, and um, when I have something that, uh, of it, that is presumably of interest, I want to share it with the world, and then I decide the way of sharing that, uh, that, that, that knowledge could be, uh, uh, we would want to believe that there's a via, via a journal article, but in my community, it's mostly via a conference. It can be by uh, 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 writing a book chapter. It could be by writing a blog post or, or, or anything else, of course, right? So information exchange is at the center of knowledge creation, of course, in research communities. So if I move to the next slide and, and, and talk a little bit about what has happened in the previous uh, 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 um, change in the internet, right? So we went from the search era on the internet to the network era, right? So what defined the, the, the search era, of course, is Google, right? You and I, when we wanted to find information, we would search for that information, go into a search engine and try to retrieve, come up with the most intelligent query request, and try to come up with the best information to answer our intent. Uh, in the new world, what defines me as an internet user is not only the information that I've posted, right, but my tribe, my network, who I'm connected with. If I'm connected to Stefan, for example, here on the first row, what connects me, what defines me is not only the, the, what I post on my wall, but of course the, the, the fact that in some cases I like or don't like and abst abstain from reacting to what Stefan is posting on his wall, right? So again, what defines me in the new internet is my tribe, right? Is in the next generation internet, which is the topic of the day, I think what will define us uh, is the convergence, and several of the, the speakers have talked about that today. The fact that the digital world and the physical world are going to converge, right? and, it's, and I'm, I'm going to give you some examples of that. Right? Um, so if you think about your digital personalities, right? you have one professional identity maybe on LinkedIn for some of us, you have one personal identity maybe on Facebook, for example. As a researcher, I have several uh, profiles, right, defining my, I, I, as a researcher, I have up to 10 profiles, right, which are my digital identities, right? And today, uh, my digital identities are quite separated from my, myself, right, as, as a person, right? My belief is that those digital identities, my personal identities, eventually will converge. 
one element of proof, and it's just uh, it's meant as a joke, but if I look at my 15-year-old, right, and, and how much trouble she gets to sleep when one of her Snapchat stories is not being liked as much as she wanted, I mean, that tells me that her digital life is having an influence on her physical life. In that case, she cannot even sleep, right? So more seriously, uh, we are becoming cyborgs, right? Uh, uh, the, the, the relationship that we are having with a phone, our phones, right, is, is incredible, right? And, 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 and eventually, we will somehow merge with, with our phones in a way that is hard to envision today, right? So, so uh, uh, when you ask uh, 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 people that are under 20 how they would live without a phone for two days, I mean, they react very strongly and they say they can't. They cannot live without a phone. On average, we, we check our phones every 10 minutes, right? And that's how addicted we have become to, 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 to this, right? If I move on to the next slide, let me tell you a little bit more about what we are building uh, as an example of, of, of what I think is happening in the Internet. So in the 90s, uh, in the mid-90s, what happened is that the research articles became digital objects. And, and it was a, a very big uh, revolution at the time. People talked about the P2E, the print to electronic revolution at the time. Very, uh, uh, very, I mean, very soon after that, uh, people had, the, the, some very smart people uh, uh, had the intuition that uh, not only can we uh, make articles digital objects, but we, we should extract knowledge by building and understanding the relationships between uh, uh, research articles as digital objects, right? And that's what people call the, the citation graph, relating uh, uh, articles uh, uh, as an entity to other uh, articles, right, by people uh, referring uh, to, 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 to one another, right? We want to expand what we are doing at Elsevier is that we, we want to expand the data model of research, right, to, uh, of course, expand it beyond, again, information, as you remember from a previous slide, right? So we want to link an idea, a novel idea, a research article, to the funding that came to it, the awarded grant, the research article that was published, the lab that published, the researchers that were involved, potentially the patent that, were, that was issued as a result of this, the drug that was eventually uh, uh, invented, and potentially the social impact that this drug had, or the media mentioned that this invention had, right? So, so we're gonna make links between the different research entities, right? There are about 39 research entities in the data model of research. We're gonna link all those entities together. So that's what we are working on as we speak. The next generation of what we are working with uh, well, as we speak, right, is what I call the knowledge graph. So we're gonna, we're gonna deconstruct the article as an object, right, and we're gonna go back to the assertion level, right? So in fact, when you think about an article, it's a PDF object, right, it's a digital object. What's way more important is to understand the assertions. What, what is really the novel ideas in this article, right? And what we want to do is to build a knowledge graph within the article, relate the core assertions to the data model, the models, the research data that led to that, the method section, the people that were involved. So we're gonna go from 39 research entities to millions of entities, and we want to eventually connect all those assertions to one another. And that's what I, I think will, will, will define the next generation internet. If you move on and press on time uh, to the next slide, this is how it looks like. So relating, uh, so in this graph here, the nodes are people, and we are connecting people. So in this graph, and we're going to uh, make this graph live in a, in a few in a few in a few months, you will be able, as a researcher, to position yourself in the map of research, right, and seeing how you connect to other people, leveraging the co-authored graph, the people you've co-authored with, the citation graph, the people you cited and the people who cited you, who cited you, and eventually, again, the next level is linking you as a, an inventor of new knowledge to the related assertions that I mean, you connected with in the knowledge of, uh, in, 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 the, in the map of research. And the final, uh, the final and last thought that I would uh, 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 share with you is that nothing that I described earlier would be possible without user privacy and trust, right? Who can we trust with our data, right? As a researcher, who can I trust with my data? As a citizen, right? It's, 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 it's obvious to all of us that everything you have done today, everything that I've done today, from waking up in the morning to taking breakfast, taking my shower, eventually taking the train, landing here, and everything, right, has been recorded digitally, right? Everything you do, this speech that I'm making has been recorded, will be recorded, right? Everything we do now is digitally recorded. 
We have data about everything, right? For example, let me give you an example. All the steps I've taken today are recorded in my phone, for example. The food that I've taken today was recorded somewhere in the, in the bill of the restaurant I paid at the end of the lunch, right? All that could be available to a health provider, to a health provider. For what purpose, right? For what purpose? Those are the questions. Those are the questions that the next generation of the Internet uh, are raising for us. And, again, I think my, my key word, uh, Robert, would be trust. That's my key word. Thanks very much. Olivier. <clears throat> So I'd be really interested to look at the knowledge graph of the original uh, Berners-Lee article. I think that's the sort of interesting question. And the other comment I would make is that if, if Martin Luther King is right, the challenge is to get the human network out of the elite space. Cool. So not just to network all the individual researchers better, but to show them who else around the world is part of their sort of open lab potential. The last uh, speaker, and I hope you're listing the key words that are missing, ladies and gentlemen, is Vincent Fosti, the Deloitte Group. Thank you. Uh